morning and welcome. Picture Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason on this Monday. And I, I hope you had a, a fantastic weekend. Uh, you know, yesterday, my buddies and I, we had the, uh, a golf tournament. And go out there. We've got, we're, and we're, we're the last three groups of, of this tournament. And uh, so it just ruins the whole day, right? We, we didn't even tee off. It was like 1 o'clock we're teeing off and uh, such slow going out there. It, it was uh, almost 6 o'clock by the time we got done playing. It was, uh, you know, one of those things. Already frustrated enough it's going to be that slow. But I get there. I'm feeling good. You know, I've been uh, working out lately. And I, I, did, I did this. Me and my wife, we did this stretch class. Uh, on Saturday, and uh, you know, trying to, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be more limber, right, and, and uh, get the soreness out, and do all that stuff, and go, go, go to the course on on Sunday. I get my bucket of range balls, and I'm, I'm killing it. Shot after shot after shot, great shot. I'm like, okay. And all the things come rushing back, like like when I used to play basketball and you couldn't miss in warm-ups, and then the game starts and you can't hit a broadside of a barn, right? So I know this is the case. I, I know it. So I don't even finish the bucket. I'm trying to appease the golf karma and say, okay, I don't want to hit bad shots on the course. I'm going to leave some some balls in the bucket and I'm going to putt and chip and do that. Yeah, it didn't work. It did not work. I was an absolute disaster. I couldn't hit an iron. I hit the best irons of my life on the range. I couldn't hit them. Could not hit them. But in typical golf karma fashion, on the 17th hole, miraculously, I'm back, and I par 17, and I par 18, just so they can make sure that I don't throw my clubs into the garage and, and take time off, Jason. That, that was my weekend. Uh, it, it, and, of course, it had to be a tournament that, that, I, that it happened. Yeah, it was, it was a frustrating day, but, they, but they, they, they left a little meat on the bone to make sure uh, that I don't take some time off. <clears throat> yeah, it's always it's, it's always an interesting thing when it comes to uh, an activity that has uh, skill and a little bit of athletics. You know, golf is golf in my mind is a game. It's not really a sport, but uh, there is you physically just like bowling. You physically have to do the arm, you know, the arm work right and stand right. But uh, yeah, it's it's skill. That's why it's so difficult. Is you got to be oh. smart and you got to be kind of a little bit athletic. And, and you know what? You can't blame anybody else, right? It, it's just that, that, that that's the one part. You can't blame your teammates. You can't blame well, the coach, right? It's just your I, I could head. say this, though. I could say this. Uh, you generally care about what other people think. And if the other people are thinking, Joe, mess up, I want to win, you might be bringing that vibe in, which is why you were hitting him good before, because nobody cared before if nobody you were hitting cared. him good or not. Nobody cared. So yeah, there, I think there's a little bit of mind stuff going on there with bowling or with golf, because I, th I think there's the strongest will there so, sort of could almost <laughs> make other people do badly. So in my mind, I probably would blame others when I hit the ball wrong. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, but then I had to go meet my wife for dinner. And the first words out of her mouth, did you win any money? Yeah, no. No, I didn't. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, there you go. I hope you guys had a bit. But all in all, the weather was great. Uh, it wasn't a horrible weekend. Just uh, a lot of you out there, if you, all you golfers out there, you know the pain of hitting them really good on the range and then losing it completely on the course. Our toll-free number, 800-951-0592, the website at allamericangold.com and uh, one of the things that was on uh, it was just on a tv at the restaurant we were at was uh, and i didn't even realize it it was all-star weekend for the nba uh you talk about a game that's absolutely worthless uh one team i want to say it was the east they scored over 200 points 
Like, nobody guarded anybody. It, it was, it, it, I don't know. And I don't know what you could do about it because, you know, it, none of these guys want to get hurt, right? And, and so, uh, yeah, it was uh, just, it was actually laughable, uh, the Ole defense that was being played. But I guess people still want to go and be seen. I, I don't know. Uh, I have no interest in watching that. Maybe uh, if they incentivize the players in that particular game, then suddenly it gets competitive, right? And then the, then the coaches get nervous and the, and the uh, franchises get nervous, right? But yeah, I know they get paid yeah. a little bit for the game. But, yeah, you, you throw, throw them some real money, then suddenly those guys are uh, knocking each other's heads off for that one game. <laughs> but, I'm, you know, there's, there's just not a lot. I, I, you know, to tell you the truth, the fact that you brought that up, I was thinking about football uh, and, and how much I just, just, I'm just disgusted at the, the current way football is played. And I was thinking, man, if I could make, if I had a, a couple billion dollars and made my own competitive football league, I'd bring it all the way back to the beginning. No pass interference, you know, a man's game where you have to move the line of scrimmage. Because uh, the, the game that's played now is uh, a bunch of millionaires that uh, don't want to get scrapped or touched or hurt at all, you know. And they're, they're flopping like soccer players to get the penalties. I just You're right, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. That, that's what, what you, you just do? described in that All Star game. That All Star game is the same right. thing. How about this? We'll, we'll get to a little bit of news in Arizona, who's already gotten rid of the capital gains tax uh, in gold and silver. There's no sales tax in gold and silver. One of the reasons why Patriot is headquartered here in Arizona. Uh, last week, there was another bill that made its way through the House and into the Senate in regards to gold and silver. We'll talk about that next. Under 9510592, Joe and Jason on this Monday. Normally, uh, we have Joey with us. Uh, he is in meetings today, so he won't be able to join us. Uh, but, man, if you've got old 401Ks, if you're getting ready to retire, maybe you just retired, uh, you're, you, you're looking for somebody to look out for your money because, let's face it, most of us, when it comes to our own money, we don't do a very good job of it. Check them out. Give Joey a call, 602-909-9048, uh, and maybe he can help you because uh, if you don't have any of the Magnificent Seven, in your portfolio, uh, you're you're probably having not a great year. But a quick look at the markets: the Dow's down 150, the S and P's down 25, the Nasdaq's down 130. Uh, the 10-year note hanging around uh, just below 430. Crude oil, as we told you, uh, up again today, just under 80. Dollars now a barrel. Uh, Brent at eighty four. Gold's higher today, uh, two thousand fifteen. Silver a little off today, but silver's had a pretty good run here. Uh, a little profit taking today. Silver at twenty three dollars. Uh, and diversification is the name of the game. Uh, that's why we talk about gold and silver here. That's why we give you Joey to look out for yourself. And then why refi? Because, uh, you know, if you don't have Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Meta, Microsoft, uh, and, and Nvidia, I guess throw Tesla in there, but maybe Tesla not as much lately. Uh, if you don't have those seven core stocks in, in your portfolio, which they're now dubbing the Magnificent Seven, uh, it's been a much different market out there. And again, we think 2024, the year of chaos, Diversify yourself if you can. If you have $50,000 or more and you want to earn a fixed rate of return of up to 10.25%, I want to say the lowest rate, if you just do a year, it's like six and a half. So, I mean, let's face it, that's the worst that you can do with our friends over at Y Refi. And that's just because you want to do it for a shorter length of time. If you want to go five years, you get. 10.25, but I said a key word in there, fixed. What does fixed mean? That means it doesn't change. It's not correlated to the stock market. I don't know what the stock market is going to do. Hey, look, Frank, if Jason and I, if we both knew exactly what Wall Street or gold or silver, heck, anything, just one thing. I don't care. If we knew what corn or soybean or wheat or oil, if we knew what it was going to do, 
exactly what it was going to do tomorrow, next week, next year, neither one of us would be sitting here. Right? We wouldn't be. Now we'd be, uh, you know, got a multi, multi, multi millionaire slash billionaires, and we wouldn't be doing this. And that's the same forever. Anybody who tells you they know what's going to happen, they don't know. They're, they're speculating, and now some of them, hey, it's an educated speculation, right? We educate, educationally, we feel that gold and silver are going to be much higher. And so far, we've been right for 20 years. But why refi not correlated to the stock market fixed rate of return? That means it doesn't change. You know exactly what you're going to get every single month. Uh, you can turn your income on. Like, listen, there's people out there that they do a million dollars with why refi and they, they, they live the interest, right? That's what they're, that's their spending money, right? I take, hey, I got to make a hundred thousand dollars and that, that's our, my spending money for, you know, uh, for the year. Those types of things. But check them out. Invest y refi dot com. That's the word invest, the letter Y R E F Y dot com. Or just call them at eight 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 Y refi twenty four. Jason, before the break, it, and we're seeing a lot of activity in the states. Uh, a lot of states have done similar, you know, things like Arizona's already done. They've gotten rid of the sales tax. A lot of states now are getting rid of the capital gains taxes. Uh, and now a lot of states, and I shouldn't say a lot yet, several states now are, are talking about either building depositories like Texas, making gold and silver legal tender once again in Arizona uh, last week a Senate bill 1633 was a new would propose a law that would establish an Arizona bullion depository of course it's always got to be a bullion depository right we that's why they, they, you can't put the old gold in these things you know that that's always their thing with it the depository would serve as safe storage for precious metals and would facilitate the issuance of state minted gold and silver coins along with a transactional backed currency on February 12th this was on February 5th on February 12th the Senate Finance and Commerce Committee passed it by a 4 to 3 vote the bullion depository would serve as a custodian, guardian, and administrator of certain bullion uh, coins. And of course, now that's a key thing. So being the administrator as well, uh, because this will allow them to mint uh, a state gold and silver. I don't know if they'll do bars, coins, whatever they ultimately decide to let that be a, a transaction, you know, allow you uh, to pay property taxes, mortgages, things like that. Uh, they also said the, straight, the state treasury would then be allowed to deposit a portion of state monies into the depository in the form of bullion, and that bullion deposit would be considered part of the state's financial reserve so jason uh, again we're seeing more and more states now deciding you know and the, uh, really what arizona's deciding is hey we want to hold something other than dollars uh and we're going to create a depository hopefully and i think they will because it just makes sense uh, they'll also open it up like texas has done you can now store you know we do i precious metals iras here uh, you used to be able to only store it in in uh, in Delaware. Uh, you can now store it in Texas uh, and and hopefully Arizona. Not too far in the future, uh, you can store uh, your IRA through us there. Obviously, that hasn't happened yet. They got to build the depository and do all those things. But change is definitely a lot of states kind of kind of seeing what all these countries jason have been seeing when it comes to how do we want to hold our reserves we want more options 
Yeah, I mean, and how many states you estimate, Joe? I'm wondering because uh, it, it sure seems like the the words getting around with people in in, uh, in in higher places as to what's getting ready to come. I mean, why would states suddenly? I mean, I understand Texas. I understand some of the red states. Uh, wanting to go to this direction, but uh, I could be wrong. But some of the blue states possibly doing this too, Joe. I just makes me makes me uh, wonder, you know, th that there are people that have a little bit more of an inside understanding of what's to come. And uh, although I like the fact the move to gold and silver is, is a good idea, it also we understand what gold and silver does. It moves and it goes higher in value because the dollar is being destroyed and things are getting ready to go badly. So it's a, it's a little bit of a, a good thing as a gold and silver buyer, but also a little ominous as uh, watching what's going on in the world. Yeah, so the last step now for Bill, Senate Bill 1633, it moves to the Senate Rules Committee uh, where it will get a hearing and must pass by a majority vote. And once that occurs, and if that occurs, uh, th then uh, this bill's going to move through the legislative process, and, and Arizona uh, will will definitely be at the forefront here. And, and uh, as Jason was pointing out, I think right now with the legislation across the country that's happening, I think we're now at, at a, a majority of states now don't uh, are getting rid of the sales tax on gold and silver. And uh, we're, we're, we're getting close. We're not there yet, but but a more than a, a small handful, a big handful of states have gotten rid of the capital gains tax. And, uh, uh, and, and a, a smaller group of states is proposing rules just like Arizona, where they can take some of their reserves put it into gold and silver, uh, create depositories, and then also Arizona going a step further and saying, hey, we want people to be able to transact with it as well. That would be really, seems like a really good thing. I just, uh, I think it's a little more complicated. Uh, Joe, you tell me, I mean, uh, some of these states are in, uh, have debt. I think a lot of these states have debt. And if you're holding a depository, I'm just this is just me thinking out loud. You put gold in the state depository. We say it's a state depository, and the state has to pay has to pay some debt suddenly. Uh, th does the gold is that a, is that a part of the state paying its bill? I I don't know, Joe. I'd rather hold it in my, in my own possession. I don't know about the the state depository, especially if it's one of those bankrupt states like California or any other state that might enter this that's in debt, Joe. Well, I think that would be a separate thing, right? So the, the state would have its portion of, of gold or silver in there that they could, as to Jason, well, hey, we could liquidate it at, at some point in the future to pay uh, debts or what have you. Uh, the If they open it up to individuals being able to, that'll be separate. They, they won't be able to get uh, legally without the uh, some rules changed to get access to it. Now, of course, what do we the only thing that we worry about <laughs> on the precious metals IRA is the federal government saying uh, that, hey, you know what, we're going to confiscate uh, gold and silver again. We're having currency problems. Uh, we need to back it by something, right? We're, we're we in order to sell the debt the way we need to. Uh, we need to now back it, and we're going to back it with gold. I mean, that's that's a possibility uh, right now. Uh, I would say it's low, but I'll, I'll say this: it's a lot higher today that that possibility than it was 20 years ago. Right when the debt was only you know five trillion dollars, you know where it sits today, I it's a it's a possibility. I would still say, Jason, it's a remote possibility, but it's a possibility. It also creates a record of of transaction too, which goes directly to you. Also, I mean, if you're a private person, this is to me this is not the way to go. If you're private about it, I understand for safety I, uh, the individual situation. Some people have households where. You may have a less than trustworthy uh, relative living in the house and, and keeping valuables on the premises. This becomes a really good option. So I'm not totally against it. I'm just saying, Joe, yeah. all options on the table. Man, I wouldn't trust the government holding none of my stuff yeah. at any time. Yeah, and as much and as again, uh, the these depositories don't allow for the pre-33 gold. That's just another one of the reasons why uh, we like it so much, right? You know that that's that just tells you a lot about it uh and again for a, for a lot of people out there hey you know what i, I i'm doing okay 
right? But but my wife, my my family, my household, uh, the we just don't have a ton of extra money. Uh, but the the money that we do have, it's in a, it's in a four hundred one k, it's in an IRA, uh, and you can convert those to precious metals. Here's the key, though. I want to say this really quickly: you can't be working for that, still working for that employer. Uh, that, that, then you got to stay with them. But if you've left a job, or maybe hey, I, I'm retired now, or I got it in in an IRA, you can roll that into a precious metals IRA. If you like, you are limited. You know, you got to buy the bullion. But here's the other cool part about it, though: you can always take delivery of it. So if you put silver eagles in there, as an example, or tenth ounce American gold eagles, and things get creepy. And you get nervous, you know, say two, three, four years from now, you could actually take what it's called in-kind delivery. It'd be just like you were selling, right? You're selling out. Is, and if you're over 59 and a half, you're doing it without penalty. You'll, you'll have to pay tax on it. But you can get it delivered right to your house so you have uh, some of that, uh, you know, barterable material uh, at your fingertips. So there are some good things about it. Patriot Radio News Hour. Jason and I will be back right after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Joe and Jason on this Monday, and and we've uh, seen uh, gold prices, silver prices. You know, they uh, fell off when the inflation, the hot inflation data came, uh, and then it came right back. Right, boom, here we go back. You know, right back to where we were, uh, kind of just flexing their muscle because demand uh, continues to be extremely strong. Uh, we're trying uh, to keep pricing, you know, as, as competitive as we can, but it's getting hard. The availability uh, just drying up. Uh, we've had, we've been fortunate because, you know, we've been around, gosh, when we're approaching, we're, we're closing in now uh, on, on what, almost 30 years now? I mean, pretty close. We're at 27, year 27 here. Uh, we've had uh, some selling for different reasons uh, that that uh, have happened in the marketplace. But today uh, we are doing inventory here in Arizona. So uh, Brittany was doing inventory. We had... Uh, some stuff that we don't have enough of to 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 do anything with. So we we decided that we're we're gonna uh, do something to 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 spice it up and make make a deal a really good deal. How, how's that? We're gonna do it with twenty dollar gold pieces. We only have fifty, and that's. Because we don't have any more twenties that we can price. By the way, twenty-two fifteen, and the way it's looking today, you know, gold's up four right now. Probably, probably going to see, may see twenty-two twenty-five tomorrow uh, on a twenty. We're going to take them down to twenty-one seventy-five, which you know, that's that's okay. That's a, that's a decent deal, you know, uh, with gold sitting here at two thousand fifteen. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a twenty. And two piece dollars together for twenty one seventy five. So that's that's and these are VG plus and, and some of these really they, they can be considered AU. They're nice looking piece dollars. I'll, I'll just say that they're 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 nice looking piece dollars. That's about sixty dollars worth of silver uh, in with this. So for twenty one seventy five. You're going to get a $20 gold piece, 1866 to 1907, and two piece dollars. However you want to uh, do it. Hey, I got uh, uh, f- two free piece dollars, or hey, I-, I got a good deal on a couple of piece dollars, and I paid you know $2,100 or $2,115 on the 20. Either way, uh, it-, it-, it makes a a a, a good deal, a very good deal. So a $20 gold piece. And two piece dollars for twenty one seventy five at eight hundred 
951-0592. And, you know, we've been talking quite a bit about insurance uh, and how expensive insurance has become. Uh, the St. Louis Federal Reserve came out. These numbers are just incredible for now 11 straight months in a row uh, car insurance has been ar- uh, rising at over 15 percent a year for the 17th month in a row car insurance has been rising by at least 10 percent uh, a year and home insurance jason the numbers are almost identical as uh, it continues to skyrocket and apparently, you know, because what do people do, right? Your only, your only option is to, what, call your agent, right? They don't set the price, right? These agents, right? Uh, hey, I'm, an, I'm a State Farm agent. Yeah, well, you know what? They, believe me, the agents, they're, they're not involved, right, in the rate setting. Uh, here's what they're starting to say in an interview with the Wall Street Journal. It's soul-crushingly tough, said one agent. He goes, there are no good days. Agents are on the the sharp end of what they're calling a national crisis in home and auto insurance all over the country. Uh, One 18-year veteran who works for farmers said that a family would walk in needing coverage You would walk, you would write them a policy, and they would walk out happy in the old days. Those days no longer exist. You never get to deliver good news. Every rate change is an increase. Every coverage change, and this is something that we haven't talked about. You know, we we see it in food, right? We call it shrinkflation, right? The, The box of cereal, hey... It's still three forty nine or four ninety nine or whatever the price was, but there's just less cereal in it, right? The the, the bag of chips, boy, if you don't buy a bag of chips uh, like Lay's when they're not on sale, a bag of chips like it's five six dollars if it's not on sale. It's crazy, but you know what? There's less chips in the bag, right? We call that shrinkflation. In insurance, what the insurance agents are saying is, man, listen, not only are you getting a price increase. And a double digit price increase to go along with it, they also have what they're calling a policy change. And what that means is they now cover less stuff. Not, so not only do you got to pay more, Jason, they won't even cover some of the stuff that they had been covering in your old policies. Yeah, that's uh, a sure sign of inflation, right, Joe? You know, insurance companies. Uh, off, obviously, they're in a game of risk. You know, they they sign the policies, and if something goes bad, they they put, they pay up, right, Joe? And so they they uh, they're not going to lose money. So they uh, anytime someone you know house burns down, you have a hurricane or whatever, uh, all that damage that happens to all the properties they're insuring, that just gets bled onto all the insurance policies that didn't have any damage. You know, it's a, you're you're a part of a group. You're you're a part part of a, a, a group inside a fund, so to speak, of of, of insured. And uh, I don't I don't think they're the models are working out too good with all the higher prices, Joe. You know, the houses Man. went spiraling upward in price before the inflation. Right, twenty twenty. Remember the housing prices, twenty twenty, twenty twenty one, going crazy, and then the inflation. Kind of like gold went up in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one, and then the inflation. Uh, another another leading indicator was the housing prices, and uh, they have to cover all that. So, car prices, everything prices, right, Joe? It's uh, it's going to make insurance very very inex- uh, inaffordable. A lot of people, especially in certain states, their premium a hundred percent increase in premiums in just five yep. years. I mean, this is what's been facing them. Uh, these associations, so this is very popular uh, with the retirees, where they're, they're part of like a condo associate, like it's a, a, a condo tower, right? They, they, the, the, those insurance prices, uh, up, up 50, these people are seeing a 50% increase in some
some parts of the country just on uh, the insurance for the buildings. It's just incredible uh, what, what's been happening. And at the same time, you got to pay 50% more, and we're not going to cover a bunch of stuff that we used to. Take the Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Joe and Jason on this Monday got a gold and silver package, a twenty dollar gold piece, and two really nice uh, piece dollars, uh, all for twenty one seventy five at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. And uh, uh, Mike Shedlock, he, he's the guy that put all of these charts together from, I want to say it was from the, the St. Louis Federal Reserve in talking about how expensive uh, insurance has gotten. And it's one thing when you talk these numbers, like Arizona, listen, it's already been approved. Homeowner insurance in Arizona, 20% increase. Dude, done. It's done. It's over. It's be- you just got to pay it. There's there's no uh, way around it. But when they looked into the the real numbers, so they're talking about like car insurance. Oh well, you know the the the, the Federal Reserve. And, and again, I don't know how they come up and get away with all the fake insurance or really inflation data. Period. Because I say it all the time. They really don't track inflation. So Shedlock starts by saying, hey, listen, according to the Federal Reserve data, car insurance, as an example, let's just pick that one. It's up 15% in 11 months, right? So let's just say, okay, 15% for 12 months, okay? But when you actually do the, the number nationwide, so this factors everywhere, right? Some states it's more, some states it's less. Nationwide, the national average for full coverage for car insurance rose to $2,543 this year. Now, listen, this year we're only six, what, six weeks into the year, seven weeks into the year? By the way, a 26% Increase, But isn't it convenient, Jason, that somehow the Federal Reserve can take a 26% increase and turn it into 15? I mean, that's just, you know, that, you know, just, I guess I dream a genie, right? I guess they just, you know, blinked and bobbed their head and poof. Look at, see, inflation's not that bad. Well, didn't, like, 40 years ago, they readjusted how they calculate inflation already? We've been already dealing with false numbers already, half of what it really is. They're two percent or one and a half percent that we were seeing every year in a normal years, more like a three or four percent. So, uh, you know, and you can see this, you can see through it if you look at uh, other indicators. The average uh, increase in the money supply has been five percent every year up until recently, up until 2020, right? So, that two, two and a half, you know, inflation, which is half the way they calculate it. It's actually five. Five. They've increased the money supply five percent a year, almost every year. It's, it's been standard, except for, of course, except for twenty twenty, where they just went, they exploded. So, Joe, uh, here we are at three and a half percent. You know, CPI year over year inflation. Uh, the, the money printing's got to look like more like a seven percent if it keeps going like this. You know, minimum, maybe ten percent. I mean, uh, that's why we have the inflation. That's just that's just yeah. it's it's a simple thing, but it's uh, calculated to make it seem a little fuzzy. Yeah, so when you're sitting there and, and you're you're thinking about, hey, wait a minute, I've got a car, my wife's got a car, my kids, they've got cars, right? All of a sudden, you're looking at uh, your insurance bill, and it jumps up 25, 30%, right? Then all of a sudden, your homeowner's insurance, yeah. right? Yeah. All of a sudden, that jumps up. 20%, 25%, even more if you live like in Florida or, or Louisiana, California, right? You, you start putting these numbers together. You're not, hey, it's not an extra, well, it's an extra $20 or it's an extra $40. No, these are hundreds of dollars, 
right? Now, all of a sudden, wait a minute. You know what? Hey, I was doing okay. I got a raise at work. Yeah, groceries are more expensive, gas and this and that. But you know what? I still had an extra three or four or five hundred dollars at the end of the month. Nope. Nope. Here comes the insurance, right? Hey, I'm up. I got to renew my insurance. Bam! Right? All of a sudden, that extra three, four, five hundred dollars, Jason, it's gone. Yeah, I mean, that's just in, you're just talking insurance, man. I, I tell you, I mean, I, I'll, you know, I don't know. This is kind of on the side, but did did you see Tucker Carlson go grocery shopping in Russia? Did you see that? I had, no, I didn't. I didn't. I had several listeners send me clips. Uh, Private citizen Herbie being one of them. But uh, yeah, you, uh, while he was over there interviewing all Putin, he, uh, you know, you need a lot of Russians for a, a lot of rubles, a lot of rubles for a dollar. So you think, okay, well, the Russian, you know, Russia's got to have it worse than us in some ways. I guess that's how they put it. But uh, he did a grocery sh- shopping trip, and the grocery sh- uh, store was uh, pretty decent looking. I'm sure they're not all this way, but they're really updated. You have to go through a department store to get to the grocery store. That's how they're set up. So you go. I think what he said is, you're going through a. Uh, I don't know, you're going through like a Walmart to get to the uh, Kroger right. sort, of, sort of thing. But, right, right. But he, he, bought, he bought what was, you know, essentially about $400 worth of groceries. That was estimated. So all the guys in, the, in, the, in, in his camera crew, they were all, so this is about $400 worth of groceries. You know, and then they, they, they paid for the groceries. All, all, all similar items that we get here, uh, it ended up being U.S. dollars, 105 bucks. 105 bucks for 400 dollars american groceries you know so i uh makes you wonder what's going on here joe you know they're the ones that have the sanctions and right. uh, the groceries right. are much cheaper so uh i, I uh, it, it's it's very stark contrast as to what we've been taught about what's going on with america being the greatest place in the world to live this inflation missed much much worse than i think we know yeah, and a lot of it, too. I'm sure, right, the, the median income in Russia is probably much lower than here in the U.S. I'm guessing. I don't know. But, yeah, the problem with us making a little more money is, unfortunately, the inflation usually eats away at all the extra money you made. Patriot Radio News, our final segment coming up. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Joe and Jason here uh, on uh, this. I guess it's a holiday, so I mean, technically, uh, the the Dow and all of that was from Friday. Um, is it what President's holiday? Is that what it President's? I know the banks are closed. Uh, some kind of holiday is going on out there. So uh, for those of you that didn't have to work today, congratulations. For all the rest of us, uh, twenty dollar gold piece with two nice looking piece dollars. I don't want to say AU because they're 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 not all AU, but they're they're nice looking piece dollars. You get all three pieces. For twenty one hundred and seventy five dollars at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two supplies only we only had fifty to begin with uh, so whatever we have is what we have uh, but and then uh, you know we're going to be looking at, at higher prices unfortunately because uh, well let's face it uh, gold uh, has moved up here pretty nicely uh, since that hot CPI data from uh, what was it last week and and now when we're we're looking at at what's happening uh, on the insurance side of things right uh, incredible how much more things are costing and then Jason was talking about you know hey in Russia think about here you know uh, it's a whole industry here used to be people came retirees they, they go to Arizona they go to they go to Tucson and, then, and, and Phoenix, but it got too expensive. Yuma now. Yuma is booming here. And it's booming with senior citizens, retirees, because it's cheaper and it's close to the border. They actually have shuttle buses that take people down there every month. Take them down, hey, get your prescription drugs in Mexico. Get your dental work in Mexico. Get your eye care in Mexico. Because it's so much cheaper there 
than it is here. So, you know, and it, it makes no sense, but this is, you know, part of the rig system. And when they tell us, oh, yeah, we're here for you, no, they're not. The insurance companies and, and the pharmaceutical companies, probably the food companies, as case was talking, the same thing. They know they can char- we'll just charge more to the Americans. I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing ever. Uh, think about the lost GDP here uh, with the overpricing of prescription drugs and all these people going to Mexico to get their health care needs because they can't afford you know, whatever the payments are for Medicare and Medicaid, they can't afford, they'll, they'll just get the drugs down there, Jason, and pay less. Almost makes you want to work remotely from Russia, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, earn the American wage and, and spend it in Russia. I mean, Ed Snowden's still there for a reason. Maybe he figured it out, you know. Maybe that's why he's still there. Maybe he's not there because he's, uh, he's being protected. Maybe he's just there because, like, wait a minute, this is, this is a little easier living over here. I mean, uh uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's interesting how the American mind has been molded into thinking a certain way. And when you start to look at simple facts, you know, our inflation, you know, everybody else's inflation. Look at this country. Oh, look at that country, this African country. And look at this South American country, you know, Argentina and Venezuela. And, wow. Oh, look at Russia's. Russia's under sanctions. I just, I, I found it, you know, I, it's just a little shocking. You like I said, uh, uh, maybe, maybe there's something funny about that video, Joe, but man, it, sh- it sure looked like he's on the up and up. They showed the scanner, they showed the prices. Yeah, and you know what? It's not like, oh my gosh, you only had one thing to choose from, right? You only can buy black shoes today, no. It's not how it works, is it, right? Patriot Radio News Hour. Jason and I uh, wrapping it up for the day. We're coming right back with the half empty cup.